Greetings. Greetings, Max here. This is Ock Norton. Who, is, who am I speaking to? Max. Max, it is nice to meet you. How can I serve you? Uh, thanks, Ock Norton. Um, uh, my uh, first question is, yeah, we know a little about you, but we know some. Uh, so your wife was Nefertiti, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, her portrait was on my wall uh, when I was growing up. My mom was very fond of Nefertiti. Yes. Uh-huh. So uh, your facial features strike me. I, when I saw your portrait, I was very, uh, very impressed. Um, obviously, you stand out of the other um, pharaohs, you know, the portraits of other pharaohs are very different. So you came from elsewhere. Yes. So where from did you come? I came from uh, uh, Orion. So it's not Syrian, Sirius? Syrian and Orion areas were <coughs> very confusing at that time. Uh, because those are the two places that the pyramids transported many people from, is Syrian, uh, Sirius and Orion. And so therefore, uh, those two places get mixed up. And I was from Orion, and actually I visited Sirius area many times. But uh, ethnically, you weren't Syrian, right? No, I was Orion. Ah, I didn't realize that face comes from Orion. There were many wars going on at the time uh, of uh, the Egyptian empires or classes or whatever you want to call them. There were many wars going on in the Orion realms. I happened to come down and take the place of some of this, those that were in charge here. The Blue Avians, the Syrians, and the Orions were more in charge and more doing many meet meetings at that time. And, it, and so, yes, I was from Orion. Mm hmm And um, you did some radical changes in the... Egyptian uh, setup in economy yeah. and politics and religion. I brought forth a one god religion. It was a quasi one god religion. They could have minor gods, but there was one major god. Uh huh. And that was Atep, the sun god. All right. Why did you choose Atep? I chose Atep because I thought he was most important. He was the one that kept everything alive. He was shed light on the world. He made things grow. But if you come from Orion, that wouldn't be Atep, right? It would be some other deity. So you didn't bring the all that all that is. You just brought something else. I mean, yeah. that is. I didn't, I didn't bring my thought processes from Orion. I was mm -hmm. here a while before I chose mm -hmm. what to do. Uh -huh. Yes, Atep uh, is not someone that I would bring from Orion, no. Or from Sirius, as a, as a matter of fact. Right. So um, how much of that god is... Uh corresponds to their um, actual spirit of the sun, because I assume that the sun has its own personality, and Atep is uh, basically sun god. Uh, is it the same, or are they different? They are 
the same, but you are correct. The personality of ATEP to me was different than the way it was perceived originally. Mm -hmm. Sun God originally was uh, something that you could not understand by human standards or by uh, the standards of the Egyptian world. But I brought an understanding to Atep of him as a creator of life. So it was like a, a conscious God creation which you created. For humans, it wasn't a real, uh, how do you say it? It wasn't a real uh, spiritual entity until you developed it. Oh, yes, exactly. But once I mean, you developed it... Yes, go ahead. Once you developed it, it became a reality? Yes, I started letting people know that Atep was the one god. They could hold on to their lesser gods. Those smaller gods were all right with me. And so that's why they call it a quasi one god system because I did have other gods that were allowed into the system but only one major god. So this idea of having a monotheistic religion did it come from Orion? Did it did you have the same in your home world? Yes. But it was not Atep that they worshiped there. Uh, what was it? It was what it was a different sun god there with a different name. The Atep was the Egyptian uh, name for the sun. So which sun did, did uh, Orion's worship? Orion's worshiped the, the sun that was there. Uh, Orion is a constellation that is like Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and so on. Yes, but they didn't, from Orion, it was not called that. The sun god there was called Vayashan. The Vayashan god of the sun from the Orion standpoint. Now, I don't see any difference, really. All of the suns were creator, uh, uh, mass portions of creation. It's hard for me to speak English. Right, right, right. But the creator's sons were all the same. They were all one great big god. I see. So um, we number the stars in the constellation by size. So Alpha is the biggest one and so on. So right. which, one, which one was the one which worship, was worshipped by Orion? Alpha. Alpha. Okay, got it. Um, so, um, you, you know what happened after you were, were, were gone, right? I, I do not go back and look, but after I left, the, the one God system was overtaken again. In right. fact, they did not, it did not set well with the people at the time when I was there. They liked their own personal gods better. They liked to, they believed that if they did not follow those family gods and the gods that were there, then harm would come upon them. And so they did worship Atep as a god, but they did not stop worshiping all the other gods that they believed in. Yeah, basically what happened, uh, as we understand, is that your main manager, I forgot his name, became a pharaoh and he murdered your children. Yes, that is, yes, Nefertiti did not murder her, her uh, murder touch. The others did. No, 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 the manager, I mean, the, the 
common, commoner, the the one who was your uh, like minister of finances, I think he was. Your minister of finances took to, took the power. He moved the capital back to whatever it was before, and uh, and uh, after a while, your children were murdered. First was uh, the um, Tutankhamun, and second it was the yes, uh, he, the daughter. Some accused Nefertiti of killing her own son, but he did. She did not. It was him. Of course. All right. Yes. Uh huh. So now we do have uh, uh, the major monotheistic religions. So your seeds were planted, and uh, and they gave uh, gave uh, rise to those religions. They are somewhat the same, but not the same. Uh, mine was the worship of the sun, and this is a different worship. This is like the worship of a the universe of or something of creation. It is yeah, a little different, but it is the same in its basis. Uh, that is a. Um... A theory that you were the Moses. No, I'm not. Uh huh. I was not it, Moses. You I see that now? I did not even believe in the same God that Moses believed in, mm -hmm. but I do understand now that the one God religions are believing of in the same God that Moses brought forth. Ah. Uh, did you meet Moses? No. Mm, did you meet Jews? I knew who I knew Judaism was. Basically, it was introduced to Egypt uh, even then, but it was uh, not accepted. At some point, Hexus uh, took took power over Egypt and ruled for a few hundred years. I think they ruled, maybe a couple hundred years. Yes. And they were believed to be uh, pre uh, the Jews, which didn't get uh, you know b before the Exodus. The Jews before the Exodus, I think. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I so, they were. Assyrian, I believe. Ah. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, maybe they were uh, uh, nomadic tribes of uh, Arabian Peninsula. I do not know what they were called. I know that some of them were from Assyria. I see. Assyrians were more settled, and the Jews seemed at that time to be uh, traveling warrior types, and yes, also traders. I'm, I'm not talking. I know which ones you mean, the nomadic ones, but yeah, huh? the Assyrians were much more established when yep. they mm -hmm. grew. Yes. Uh huh. So, how much of technology did you have at the time? Well, we had a, a, actually a great deal of technology. Uh, we had the, uh, the pyramids were transporters, communicators with the stars, and actually had many functions. They could refuel ships from land to sky. They could, they were actually uh, energy storage areas. And uh, they had, uh, there, there's actually evidence left of that that underneath the pyramids there uh, is evidence that there was uh, energy storage. On top of the pyramids were crystals where they did uh, transporting and, fra and um, communication. The windows that faced out from the, from the pyramids were facing Orion and Sirius. 
So they were transporter areas. Mm -hmm. So how did you become a, a pharaoh? What was the process? The process was that they needed one immediately, and so I was there. And I fit the bill because I had the uh, the education I, of, of the Egyptian people. I had the leadership abilities, and I had the, uh, the acceptance of the people. I had a face that they liked. Right. Yeah, your face was extraordinary. Um, who was making the choice? The Orion Council. Ah, that's easy. And uh, did you rule over some other areas other than Egypt? Um, well, the Egyptian area stretched for quite a ways back then. Abu Simbel and things of that nature were part of, and, and very uh, portions of Africa very much south were also part of the Egyptian rule at that time. I mean, not in Russia, not in any other part of the world. Oh, we did have some areas that crossed over from uh, Atlantis into the Sumerian areas as well, uh, into Pakistan and places of that. Uh, India and Pakistan were also under some Egyptian rule at that time. Um, you mean using camels or some other transportation? We used boats to get across to Atlantis. Atlantis was a large area in the Mediterranean Ocean, and we would just pass over there and use boats to get from uh, Egypt to Atlantis, Atlantis to uh, India. So then you would use camels to go across this uh, Assyrian area and then to India? We would transport there for the most part. What do you mean transport? Like technologically? Yes. Uh-huh. But so if we did not... travel, if we did travel, we went by me by way of Atlantis. All right. The, the, the reason why we'd stop there is because there was a lot of good trade in Atlantis uh -huh. and a lot of good trade in India and Pakistan, All what right. that is called now. Now, it's hard to date your, your, your uh, so you were ruling before the fall of Atlantis? Well, it was there was still some of the Atlantis there, yes. Ah, because uh, Atlantis, the, many people think that Atlantis all died at the same time, right. but it, there were portions. There was a large portion of it that did sink at one point, but uh, eventually, some of the the other portions were destroyed by the Atlanteans to, to keep their secrets safe, and therefore that was a later period. So yes, Atlantis existed for a long period of time and was still there at some portions when the Egyptians were there as well. I see, because um, we see the, you know, the tomb of Tutankhamun and it's pretty well dated. It's I don't remember exactly the dates, but it's not uh, it's not twenty thousand. It's more like three thousand or four thousand years ago. Actually, it is older than that. They've made some errors on their mm -hmm. carbon datings. It is uh -huh. older than that. Yes, if if you will check with the scientists of this modern day, you will find that it's at least fifteen thousand years old. Fifteen. Yes. Oh, that makes a huge difference. Yes, it does. 
Is it Egypt, the time of Egypt? The pyramids are much older than they had originally right. thought they right. were. So, fifteen thousand. Oh, then uh, ten, I would say. Second. I, at least ten, maybe not fifteen, okay. but at least okay. Some. Okay. Because uh, Atlantis, there was pieces of Atlantis still in existence at that time. Uh, because um, of archaeological um, uh, uh, research, I mean, ten thousand. The technologies was thinking was thought to be very primitive. They didn't invent even the advanced. Uh, agriculture or access or tools it was so so primitive so but it's all find, messed up you will find that in turkey there is a civilization there that that it predates uh it goes back to about 15,000 years and this is a very advanced civilization oh god yeah so it's all messed up i guess and yes, it, the i Ice Age, was there an Ice Age at that time? At the end of the Ice Age is when these civilizations are uh, appeared and they are advanced. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, it's all, so, so, so my old age. Yep. The civilization I am speaking of actually covered their, their uh, civilization up with sand when they left, and it's still fully intact, I believe. Oh, wow. So digging in Turkey is a good idea. Okay, so it says in here that um, the Ice Age ended about 12,000 years ago. Yes. If, they, if it is correct, I'm not sure, because they have all the dating is now messed up, so I right. could be wrong. Uh, it's also possible that we just are dealing with uh, multiple past uh, timelines, and uh, we are, it's it's futile to try to combine them. That's also a possibility. Well, you're going to find that right now history is reporting new da data about ancient times, and they are finding that there were civilizations they're much longer later uh, or earlier than they thought there was. And these civilizations are very interesting and very uh, advanced. The civilization that is in Turkey that I speak of, uh, there will, there's pictures of reptilians and avians in their temples and in their structures. So my question is, is it that uh, our historical records are incorrect or is it the, the timelines were changed and we just, um, the, the past was uh, transformed? That is a good question because it could be a little of both. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I studied archaeology pretty well. I went to the museums, and my close real, clo one of the close relatives were, uh, you know, one of the archaeological uh, scientists, pretty good one. And uh, and uh, although he found a lot of miracles there, the, he didn't question the 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 main idea of, you know, of the timing. The timing was pretty much agreed upon. Uh, that was like uh, so much evidence of uh, how do you call it Neolithic, Paleolithic uh, uh, tribes. Didn't have technology. There's new evidence that these things were older than they were uh, said to be at first, uh -huh. and you're going to find that new, uh, new. Uh, ancient civilizations are being found that predate uh, Tigris and Euphrates activity. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So do you have any, uh, it's, it's my, uh, do you have any uh, 
insight into the origin of uh, of Jewish people, it, which planet did they come from, and why did Hitler try to uh, extinguish us? It seems that the Jewish people are an alien species, but uh -huh. uh, they seem to be not Syrian or Orion or any of the ones that were there, but uh, it is sort of a curiosity to me that they were there, but they do tell you that they are, at first when you meet them for the first time, they will tell you that they are not from this planet. All right, because uh, genetically there is some difference, which is weird. Uh, it looks like Germans were very much uh, prone to, how do you call it, uh, supporting the unified system. And Jews seem to be, uh, uh, how do you say, resistant to brainwashing. There is always a, a desire for uh, alternative thinking among, uh, uh, among Jews. So, so it's much harder to brainwash the Jews. Yes. Uh, I wonder if that was the reason uh, Hitler tried to to eliminate the Jews because uh, totalitarian system cannot coexist with the free thinking people. I do not know, but I think that they they were definitely connected to Anunnaki activity as well. The Jews to Anunnaki, I see. Yes. Uh, also, Hitler uh, was adamant about uh, extinguishing the. Um, of the um, gypsies, and I'm thinking that gypsies might be Hindus, uh, traveling Hindus, or some of the Hindu tribes. The the gypsies did, uh, had a whole new, a different philosophy than anybody else at that time, and they had the philosophy that they could survive on the land, but also by taking from others what they needed or gathering from others what they needed. And they used magic and deception. All right, I understand that. I just wonder what's the genetics and what's the origin. I think they're more of a renegade species myself. I would think that from what I gathered of the gypsies, they were renegade Arcturians. Ah, Arcturians. Yes, because they used the... Arcturians are very strong in magic and in, and in their early days were actually very strong at deception. And they seem to fit that bill. Ah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Are you aware of, um, just a second, um, Yogananda's people, these are, gosh, um, uh, I'm blanking on the name. Mm. Ba Bangla Bangladesh? The Bogdo Bang Bangladesh? No, I forgot. Yogananda's people, the south west of India. If you would uh, say it, perhaps I'd be aware of it. Yeah, southwest India, southeast India, I'm sorry, southeast India. Uh, yeah, I guess it's blocked in my memory. I, I, I knew that, but I cannot pronounce it. So that's all right. So Yogananda's okay, people are of interesting oh, origin. The ones that are uh, associated with the Sumerian tablets. Uh, actually, they're far from Sumeria. They are more like closer to China. Oh, it's okay. like t t south of Tibet. I'm I, oh. I'm just blanking on that name. I can't, can't remember it. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't uh, think they want they want me to pronounce it. But there is a a mystery about their origin as well. It's uh between India south, uh, south, on the ocean, or, or between India and China, I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's, That's a large right. area. That's a large area. But, yeah. yes, uh, that's an interesting... There are several different cultures uh, 
that were thriving at the time of Egyptian uh, culture as well. Bangoli, yeah, Bangladesh, Bangoli, of course, Bangoli. The Mongolians, yes. No, Bangoli, no, not Mongoli, Bangoli. Mongolians are north of India, and Bangoli is uh, the south, it's on the ocean. Oh, Bangal. Yeah, Bengal, Bengal, Bengal. Bengal. Yeah, Bengal yes. were, uh, they seem to be also Jewish, like uh, Indian Jews, Hindu Jews. It's very funny. They have some traits, they are not warriors, they are like very pacifistic, they don't fight. And, and actually as you. You stop Bengal. all the wars, right? Yes. I uh -huh. understand what you're saying. You're saying the Bengalis. Yeah. They don't fight. They never serve in the army. And they also I like... in about them at all. I do not know much about them at all. I, I will see. be honest. I don't know anything about them. So uh, you stopped all the wars of Egypt, and actually that was detrimental to your... Um, Part part of the world that you were controlling. Was there you weren't interested in it? What what was the reason? I did uh, with my one one God thought process and and from where I was from, peace was a better way of doing things. Uh, mm -hmm. War seemed to cause more trouble, so I I thought peace was the answer to the question at the time that could help us get things um, organized and situated. But it, it seemed that they wanted the war. They wanted to uh, take land. They wanted to move into other areas and uh, rape and pillage and whatever it was that they were doing. But I tried to bring more organization to the area and by bringing peace, I thought that would, that's what would happen, but it actually was detrimental to the area because it didn't grow. Right, so you were disappointed uh, in uh, humans, right? Absolutely. You tried to, br to bring us uh, some uh, a novelty and the rational ways, and we failed many in many ways. Um, well, yes, because you saw that not expanding was failure, and that's not necessarily what I was looking at. I was looking at more organizational and peaceful uh, existence, and whereas you, the human side was looking at expansion. If you weren't expanding, then you weren't succeeding, and that is not necessarily my part. All right. So uh, now we still still are in the same predicament. The Earth is uh, the Earth is uh, the population is uh, multiplying, and uh, ecology is suffering, and we are sort of facing uh, lots of crises at the same time. Yes. So what, can, what can you say about our current state? Your current state is um, not, let me put it this way. What I see in the world right now is polarization in thought processes. One thinks this way, one thinks that way, and they cannot come to a compromise. So they are pulling themselves apart. And this is happening all over your planet, not just in your United States, but in England and Europe, and in, even in China and Japan, they're polarizing their thought processes. Some believe it should be done this way, others believe it should be done this way, and they cannot come to a compromise, or will not come to a compromise, but choose to keep things pulled apart, especially in the mid, mid East as well. You see that, that has been like that for a long time, but the entire world is becoming more like that. So um, you learn about the ability of humans to take, make bad choices. And um, 
Well, they want to be right, and they do not want to compromise any of uh -huh. their beliefs to uh, in in any way, and therefore that causes uh, in the Middle East they would call it jihad, but they uh -huh. in other places it's called many different things. But it is a refusal to give in in any way to the other side. I understand. I mean, I, I know humans a bit. Um, that's what we are. And uh, I'm looking for the ways out. At your times, um, uh, you had basically very, you had absolute power. And you came to a very homogenized uh, state, which was already prepared for homogeneity and um, being ruled from above. Right. And you still failed. Now we have much more diverse state of affairs and uh, the only hom homogenizing power is actually the cabal and um, financial uh, exploitation of masses, which is standardized in every 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 well, place you, on earth. You see, in this particular state of humanity, the only thing that will cause you to succeed is categorical and catastrophe because that brings the human spirit together. That is the only thing that will unify your planet is catastrophe. I hope not, but uh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm still looking for um, still looking for telepathy uh, and technologically assisted telepathy as a, a unifying factor. That will, but that isn't coming soon enough catastrophe will come before that. Oh, are you sure? Yes. Uh, if you're sure, then you possibly have some information which we don't have. Yes. I see. Well, look at your, uh, I, can, I can point out some factors, if you will. Okay. A grand Whatever that sound is, awful. Say again? That sound is awful, whatever it is. Are you uh, hearing some sound? Yes, it's a great uh, electronic buzz or something. Um, but the grand solar minimum is changing the face of your planet little by little with great weather changes, earthquakes, and volcanoes but there will be greater catastrophes caused by the grand solar minimum that have not yet been experienced. That is far before telepathy and uh, those kinds of things take hold. Are you talking about next like five years? Yes, absolutely. Maybe two years? Maybe not, maybe the next 10 years. Okay. Next ten years. Okay. Yeah. I was planning to have uh, to have a nice, uh, prosperous uh, um, aging and uh, doing some nice science. Instead, you offer me some much more boring survival ideas. The thing is, not all of the world will suffer at once but many different places will suffer before uh, there will be telepathy. That is for sure. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, uh, I, I don't mind unity. And if it's uh, localized problems, then possibly that will bring unity because the humanity needs some humanitarian effort and- uh, Exactly. It yeah. will be that these catastrophes will will cause the human spirit to unify. Um, are you still hearing the buzz from me, electronic buzz? No, not at the moment. Oh, good. Okay. Um, very interesting. So you're talking about a natural catastrophe event. Hmm. I am, and it will be localized. Hmm. I am indeed, and your part of the world the, from Alaska to Mexico on the West Coast is particularly agitated right now. 
Oh, God. And will be agitated until uh, the end of June. Yeah. I was sort of worrying about coming to San Diego, but so far the shakes were like, I think I experienced one or two shakes and they were like micro microscopic, people wouldn't even notice them. Yes, they were not that bad, but they are very agitated at this time. Wow, but rains are very unusual. I think we will, the San Diego enjoys so much beautiful rain and uh, the, the green, the plants are absolutely excited about the rain. Yes. They didn't have enough water and now they have plenty. But they, there's many, there's weather and tectonic and volcanic agitation in your area. Um, so what are you busy with these days? Are you in the body or are you like in the spirit? I'm in spirit at this time. Are you still active on, um, with humans? I have fractals of my being within the hum human society. Oh, so that's the way you're working? That's the way all, a lot of them are working right now because of ascension. And, I see. But usually it is not that way. Usually fractals are only for special occasions and that's what this is. I see. So you're not part of like any council that governs earth no i see no council governs earth except earth governs itself at this time there are many that watch over earth but no one is governing it but your people and there are those that have uh been part of your society such as reptilians and things that have some leadership abilities and some leadership roles on your planet right now, but they're not supposed to have those kinds of things. I was thinking they were gone, but they're still here? Um, a few, yes. I see. Um, are you part of any uh, console that watches over Earth? Yes. Oh. Can you share a little more? Yes, the the Orion and Syrian councils are both watching over your planet and the galactic governments and Ashtar Command and other different Gurkvik Nir and different societies out in space watch your planet but and have some involvement but nothing too hands-on. And um, how is it possible for you to be uh, part of the console not being in the body? Is it okay for the spirits to be part of the console? They call us on us for counsel, yes. They call on spirit for counsel for many things. And we are in spirit. And um, what consoles are you part of? Well, I hear them call upon me in the Orion Council for the more than any of the others. I see. And actually, the other one that also calls on me is the Council of Wonders, which is dealing with the maintenance of relics that are very powerful. And they do call on us as well. Wow. Yeah, whenever the Council of Wanderers wants to speak, that would be an interesting uh, introduction. I never spoke to them. Yes, they are a very interesting group. They can tell you about incredible relics that exist in the universe. Wow. That is something that uh, makes for a very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, we have a couple minutes left. Do you want to say something which we didn't discuss yet? Uh, just that I was very frustrated as a ruler because of the different deceptions that were uh, done to me and through me. So it was a very, uh, a very sad time for me in, in a way. Uh, were you telepathic at the time? 
Of course. And you still couldn't see through deceptions? Well, telepathic people, once they are telepathic for a great deal of time, can hide their thought processes, their deeper thoughts. So you can see only what's on the surface. Uh -huh. And so you cannot really see the deep thoughts of man and unless they want you to see them. Because I was hoping that uh, developing telepathy on Earth will uh, eliminate deception, but what you are saying, deception is still there. Yes, it is. But would the, would the telepathy at least unite the humans any, anymore, or is it hopeless? The beginning of telepathy will calm the world down, meaning that you will be able to sense all the emotions that are there within humanity, and you will be affronted by the negative emotions. And so whenever someone is feeling angry or negative, that will cause people to stay away from them. They will affront, they will accost people with their attitude and their thought processes. But what it will do is this, people will learn how to calm their emotions when they go out in public. And so the world will become much calmer in some ways, but there will still be much deception. I'm somehow hoping to develop uh, informational telepathy using uh, technology like a helmet or maybe a, a little uh, uh, yes. hairband. So once people get information flow quicker, that should improve the communication, wouldn't it? If it will, inf yes, but can information can sometimes be negatively used. Keep that in mind. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that I see for sure. There is uh, a clear, um, how do you say, uh, degradation of the internet at the moment. It goes really fast. We get from the times of uncontrolled internet, now it goes to the time of heavily uh, managed sure. internet, and the control is pretty negative. Of course. So keep in mind that all information will be used in positive and negative ways, that all energies that exist will be used positively and negatively, and that, that um, tele telepathy will be used in very positive and very negative ways. Gosh. I wish to things to be more uh, positive. Yeah. I, yeah. We would wish that for all planets and all civilizations. However, where there is deception, uh, ability to find that deception, they will find it. And right. I do not mean to be negative about that. It is just a matter of fact. So human design has some flaws, and you are especially aware about that. Um, what is it? Uh, how different are we from Orions, for example? You, most species are not that different from one another, except for in their basic execution of their lifestyles. But the, their belief systems are very similar in some ways. But of in some ways, but not always. So it is in your belief systems that you will find your greatest differences. All right. Yeah, that's what I feel that we are, it's our upbringing and programming is that makes us different. We Correct. are very programmable. So it's, uh, it's fixable in a short period of time if we bring new programs and new ways of upbringing. Of course. Now, um, when you were creating the sun god religion, what religion did you follow? Were you atheistic at the time? I, I, was, I believed in one god. That was the religion that I believed in. Uh, but it was from Orion that I got that idea, it, not from this planet. Uh, so when you... Um, 
promoted it, it for humans. For you, it wasn't a deception. It was just a translation of your belief into what uh, you created here, right? Correct. So you were honest to yourself. You weren't deceiving humans. I was what? You, you were not deceiving us. You were honest, and that's what you believed was the right thing to do. And the thing is, because I was so honest and down to earth, failure was inevitable because I was being used and deceived. Tell me more about the deception. I didn't get it. The deception was from those around me that uh, said that they wanted a one God uh, religion, but they actually wanted to use that against the people and myself. Ah. And, and use any thoughts of uh, change to get what they wanted and not exactly what the people wanted. Wow. I didn't realize that. That, that part was missing from our history. We didn't reconstruct it from the pieces. Of we course. still saw the the events, but we didn't see that there was deception during your life. I, we thought that you were in charge and in control. Oh, no. It was all through all through my rule. Yes, I but see. they're so, telling me I have to go now. Right. You were it like God. Through, you you were like through. yeah. Yeah. It was all. You were, like, you were like Gorbachev, who. Uh, who was uh, honestly trying to do good things, and uh, as a result, the, the 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 country fell apart. Exactly. And uh, what what he he has done was reversed. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, very interesting to meet you, and thank you for sharing all that information. It fell. Uh, felt uh, it, it it was very useful in uh, filling the the gaps and and correcting some of the beliefs. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Be at peace with yourself, if not with anyone else. Thank this you. is the greatest thing that you can do, is know yourself and know who you are. Thank you. Kiecha kwa May the one God shine his self fully on you so that you be true to all things within you. Thank you.